Well, hi again, everyone, and welcome to The Good Timekeeping Show with me, Greg Anderson. Now, this episode of The Good Timekeeping Show is sponsored by you. And what I mean by that is uh, my YouTube channel has really taken off this year, and so much so that you know YouTube has actually paid me. So I decided to use that money to buy this watch. And then I decided to use this watch to make this video. So <laughs> thank you. Here it is. What you're looking at here are some G-Shock watches. Uh, these are variations of the GWM5610 model. And this uses the same module. This is the GW5000. It's made from uh, higher grade materials. But this is the one I want to talk about today. It looks very similar, but it's the GWB5600. And that B stands for Bluetooth. So this one can connect to a phone or a tablet using an app. And well, let's dig into it. Now this watch shares many of the same features as the other watches that were next to it a moment ago. First of all, it's a tough solar watch. So that means it can go for years and years and years and you won't have to change the battery because there's a solar cell built into the face of the watch and that automatically charges the internal battery or capacitor. Uh, so just exposure to regular amounts of uh, light, just regular living lighting conditions uh, will be enough to keep this battery topped off. Right up there it says multiband 6. Now multiband 6 is Casio's feature where uh, this has a built-in radio receiver and it's going to be able to pick up atomic time information from any of six transmitters in different parts of the world. So depending on how you've set this to your home time zone it's going to try to pick up time information from the transmitter in China or there are two in Japan. Of course, there's one in North America, WWVB in Colorado. There's also one in the UK and there's one in Germany. So those are the six uh, stations that this thing will try to receive. And if you don't live within range of those places, you can set the time manually and it's just going to run like a normal quartz watch. Or you can use that Bluetooth function. I'll tell you about that in a moment. And you can use Bluetooth to set this to the correct time no matter where you are in the world, as long as you've got an internet connection and a smart device. All right, well, it's uh, like many G-Shock watches. It's 20 bar water resistant. It's, uh, you know, it's got all the different protection features you would expect from a tough G-Shock watch. It also has, uh, well, look at this. It's got the kind of the resin bracelet watch band. So uh, that's, a, that's a premium feature rather than just the, uh, you know, regular old resin watch band. It's got the, the bracelet with all these links. These are all made of plastic with these little spring bars uh, connecting them together. So fairly easy to remove links if you need to resize the watch band. And then some fine tuning is available here. A little spring bar to uh, set this to any one of those holes. So normally that would cost you a little bit extra. This is kind of a newer version of the uh, composite bracelet. And so I think it's a little, mm, little less expensive to manufacture compared to the, uh, the previous versions. So there are other versions of this watch. You're going to find that the lowest priced watches go from about $140 up to like $200, depending on where you shop. So uh, they're, they're different colors. You know, some have the composite bracelet and others have a more simple resin watch band. There are negative LCD displays and positive LCD displays. So the lower priced models will generally have a machined piece of metal on the back and that is held on by four tiny screws. And then if you move up to the more expensive models, the back of the watch case is a round piece, which is a, a screw on back. The whole thing screws on. So, you know, the higher priced versions are also going to have more metal parts as opposed to plastic and resin parts. So they've got stainless steel, even titanium uh, parts on the more expensive ones. So some of them are going to weigh more than others. You know, the metal bracelets cost more than the resin watch bands to make, I'm sure. So, you know, the prices go for these higher priced ones from about $400 for some of them all the way up to well more than $1,000 for some of the others. So with the highest price models, you're dealing with, you know, stuff like limited edition and collector prices and stuff like that. So that's why they're going to really jump in price, some of them. But generally, the, the lower priced models are going to have the names that begin with GWB5600. And the higher price model names all start with GMWB5000. So just keep in mind, they're all G-Shock watches. They're all going to be tough and have the, the general G-Shock features that you like. 
So, and between all of these Bluetooth watches that I've shown you, there are just two modules. They all have the same owner's manual, so they're all going to operate the same way, interact with the smartphone app the same way. So, no matter which one you decide to buy, this video applies to any one of them when it comes to the functions and the setup and the operation. So, at this point, it's just a matter of deciding what style you like, how much you want to spend, and, you know, then it's, it's up to you. But I'll show you how to work them with this watch here. Like a lot of other Square G-Shock watches, this one is going to have, uh, well, some different screens here. Now, here's a world time screen. And actually, you can choose five different cities for your world time or alternate time zones. So I've got this set for UTC for the first one, you know, and you've got two, three, four, uh, five. I've set for Honolulu because, I don't know, I want to go to Honolulu. <laughs> but uh, you'll notice that after it scrolls through and shows you the name of the city, then right there it shows you your local time in your home time zone while it's also showing you the, uh, the world time, you know, other time zones. So you get to see both of those times at the same time. That could be a useful feature. Not every G-Shock watch will show you the local time in all these other uh, various modes. The next mode, of course, is uh, the alarm mode. There are four regular alarms on this, meaning they're going to go off for 10 seconds every day if they're, if they're turned on. Or the fifth alarm on here is a snooze alarm. This one goes off for 10 seconds, and then five minutes later, it'll also go for another 10 seconds. And five minutes later, it'll, it'll continue to do that up to seven times, meaning for half an hour, uh, including, you know, when it first goes off, up to half an hour later, it'll keep reminding you, hey, I'm the snooze alarm, better pay attention to me. So uh, that's a nice feature for, you know, when you want to choose one of your five alarms to be the snooze alarm. And of course, this is the hourly signal, so it beeps on the hour. Uh, you can turn that on or off. And turn on or off any of these by pushing the button up here on the upper left side. And then, of course, if you hold down that button on the upper left side, it prompts you to set the alarm. And you can set it, you know, the, the hours and minutes for each of those alarms. Pretty standard if you're used to G-Shock watches. It's pretty intuitive. I'll just show you the stopwatch mode here. Now, it starts off at zero here, and it's going to show you minutes, seconds, and hundreds of a second. You start and stop it with this button on the lower right side. So pretty standard stuff. If this gets over one hour, it's going to keep going. And uh, these are going to shift over one. So it's not going to show you hundreds of a second anymore once it gets above an hour. But it will show you hours, minutes, and seconds and keep going that way. It's a 24-hour stopwatch. And if you let it keep going all the way to 24 hours, it's going to reset to zero and keep going and it's going to reset to where it's going to show you the hundreds of a second again. See right there, so hundreds and seconds and minutes. All right, then uh, next mode, this is the countdown timer mode. This is also a 24-hour timer. So if you want a true 24-hour countdown, then you go in there. Oh, I, mean, I didn't hold it long enough. There we go. Now I can set this down to just zero. And if I were to start the timer right now, then it would be a true 24-hour countdown timer. Um, if not, you can, you can set it to any countdown you want from one second all the way up to the 24 hours. Yes, you can. This is kind of nice. Not every, not every uh, G-Shock will do this. But when you set how long you want it to count down, you, know, you can choose the hours, minutes, and you can also choose seconds right there for a very custom countdown timer and you can start that right there and again you've got the local home time right up there in the corner so those are all some basic functions that you would expect from just about any of these g-shock watches it's got all of those plus a few more now before i get into the app and start showing you the bluetooth uh, features that you can access let's just show you your initial setup Again, it prompts you to tell you how long to hold that, uh, hold down that adjust key to, uh, to get into the setup screens. First thing you want to be able to, to set is your home time. And by using these buttons on the right side, you can scroll eastward. And uh, by default, as you start moving it, I guess it, it just starts at, uh, starts there at UTC. And then, you know, it'll, it'll, Show me Denver, that's my selected time zone. It'll kind of keep that in mind as I'm scrolling through. But it gives me the option of, of changing it to anything else. I'll keep it at Denver for now. 
and you know you can see it's adjusting there as I go through. You can set it to any time zone in the world, so just uh, keep that in mind. Now, if you push this mode button again while you're in this setting uh, mode, you can uh, select daylight saving time either to, to change automatically or you can have it always be off or always be on. I, of course, prefer automatic uh, to show daylight saving time. But if I lived in Arizona like some friends of mine, I just keep it off all the time. Okay, next, you can, here's where you can manually set the time. Seconds, I'll just, I'll just reset it right now just for the fun of it. Uh, it set the seconds to zero and set the minutes to the nearest minute. So if it's uh, below 30 seconds, it'll just go back to the start of that minute. And if it's above 30 seconds, it will go forward to the start of the next minute. And here, of course, then you can change the hours. You can change the minutes up or down using these uh, buttons on the right side. Here you can change the, the year. Here you can change the month. And here you can change the day of the month uh, all manually. Now, you can do this manually, but the next time it, uh, it connects to either the Bluetooth or if it's able to receive from one of these multiband six stations, it's gonna override your manual settings and set it to the right time. Since I know I'm gonna do that pretty soon, uh, that's why I'm, I'm messing it up right now because I'm gonna reset this automatically really soon. All right, next, uh, yeah, you can have it either in 12 or 24 hour display mode, so whatever you'd like to do there. Here's a nice one. Uh, in, in the United States, we generally want to see the date displayed with month first and then the day of the month. But you can reverse that if you want to. And there's the setting where you can do that. I'll keep it in uh, month day mode for now. Here, the day of the week is affected by this language selection. So right now it's set for English, but it could be Spanish, French, uh, that is German. Italian, that's Russian, or I'll leave it back on English. And the only thing that affects on the whole display is when it shows the day of the week up in this window. Uh, it's going to be in one of those language that, languages that you have selected. All right, next up. Now, as I was scrolling through all the different modes, uh, you could often hear a little beep every time I scrolled to a different screen or when I start and stop the, the, the timer or the stopwatch, there's a little beep. And here's where you can mute that beep right there, just set it uh, as, as you please. I'll put it in mute for now. And here, when you uh, turn on the, the backlight for night viewing, you can have it come on for either two seconds or four seconds. I'll leave it on four for now. This is where you can turn the uh, time reception on or off. So uh, the priority is it's gonna try to set itself using the Bluetooth uh, on the app or uh, if that doesn't work, the next priority is it's gonna use multiband six to try to set itself or you can just turn that off and it won't, uh, won't set the time by either one of those, but I'll leave it on for now. And then the power save mode, that's a nice one. You see, if you leave the watch um, in, in the dark and you're not wearing it at night, it will go into a power save mode and the display will go blank and that'll save a little bit of uh, energy there for the internal battery or uh, capacitor. So between 10 o'clock uh, in the evening and I think six o'clock in the morning, it will go into power save mode if it's left uh, unused and in the dark for about an hour. And the way to get it out of power save mode is obviously to, well, you can press any button, that'll take it out of power save mode. Or it has a little sensor inside to know uh, whether, whether you've tilted it. And that's kind of that's an automatic light feature I'll tell you about. But so if you move it around a lot, that will take it out of power save mode. Or that solar cell, that's a light sensor. So if, you, if it's in power save mode, then the screen is blank. All you do is get it into an area where there's sufficient light. And that'll wake it up from power save mode. And then from here, you're back to uh, the beginning of your initial setup screens. So from there, you know, it would be a fine watch and you can do an awful lot with it just like it is without ever using the app. But let me show you what you can do now if you do use the app. Now the app I use with this is called G-Shock Connected. I found it in the Apple App Store. I'm using it on an iPad. I'm sure there's an Android version, but I, I've used it on an iPhone and an iPad. If you're looking for it in the store, it is listed as an iPhone only app. So if you can't find it, make sure that you don't have your search settings to just look for iPad apps. 
So let me show you what happens when you start up this app. Okay, so I'll just go in here and it gives me the typical startup screen. All right, now it's got the terms of use and all that legal mumbo jumbo about how there are no guarantees and they don't know if it's, if this thing will damage your devices or whatever it says in there, you know, they want to limit their liabilities. So uh, I'll go ahead and agree to all and continue. But this is where it's got a privacy notice. And so some of you may be a little bit nervous about this. There, uh, if you read through the fine print here, they want to be able to collect some data about how you're using this device, uh, this, this watch with your device here. I would say it's in order to, of course, make sure that the apps are working nice and to enhance the user experience. But you may decide you don't want uh, them to be able to collect any personal information about you. Uh, so therefore, you may decide you won't, don't want to do this. Now, keep in mind, if that's your choice, uh, you can still use this watch without the app, and it's a fine watch, and you'll, you'll be just fine. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and agree to all of these conditions so I can use the app and show you the app. Yeah, there it's saying uh, it would like to send you notifications. I'm going to allow that because I think I might have some fun with it. It also wants to access my location. I'm going to allow that while I'm using the app because I think that uh, there, are some, there are some nice features there. As I scroll down here, now you'll notice that there are several Casio watches that uh, are, are all using this app if they want to do their Bluetooth connections. This is not the only app that Apple offers, but for this particular watch, it's right down here in the bottom of the list. This is the one I want to select. And then it's going to show me if I, if I hold this button down on the lower, uh, lower left side. And if I hold it, it's going to prompt me to keep holding. And then I see a Bluetooth icon on the screen of the watch. And here on the app, it's asking me to register the watch to this app. And it's connecting. It takes just a few seconds. And then when it does, it's also going to correct the time that I had set wrong on purpose. And so that'll be right again. And there I am. Registration was successful. Now, at this point, I have a lot of features that I can access here on the app. Uh, by default, it's going to take me to the world time screen. And this is kind of fun. It's got a screen here on the app that matches what I'm seeing here in the watch face. Also, even though I could have manually set these five different cities in uh, on the watch screen, I actually can set uh, set more. I've got more cities to choose from, not necessarily more time zones, but more cities I can choose from if I set my world time cities here in the app, like La Paz, Bolivia. That's one that by default is not in the watch. But here, if I were to go in and choose Bolivia, there on the app, it's start, starting to show me a map of South America. And that's where La Paz is. And I can, I can scroll around and choose some different places. And it will prompt me to set, uh, you know, set that particular world time time zone setting to that other place. And here you can see it's going to show me where the uh, the previous city I chose was. Okay, and then it's going to just like I'm flying over to their Easter Island <laughs> that I chose. And now Easter Island is, uh, you know, number three on my list of world time cities. Now here it's showing me my my home time and from this screen, I could uh, click right here and swap world time and home time right here. So if I decide I want to switch my home time to Honolulu, then it's going to swap, see Denver and Honolulu. It shows me how it has changed it there on this screen. And it's waiting for me to tell it to send that information to the watch. And when I do, it takes a moment to connect and right down here, if you watch closely, you'll see this change in just a moment as soon as that uh, as soon as that, yeah, there we go. The change has been sent to the watch. And there you go. I've just swapped my home time with Honolulu. Right here is the time and place setting. I'll show you that in a moment. But let's skip ahead to the utility setting screen where you can set the alarm. And see, I've got some alarms waiting, waiting to go. They're, they're already set on this watch. Uh, but I can, like, like, let's say the snooze alarm. It's uh, 610 in the morning every day. This is where I can set it off and send that information back to the watch. And suddenly the snooze alarm is no longer on. 
on the watch, or this is also where I could turn it back on again and I can set it to some other time. Uh, you know, just scrolling through like this. It's got it in 24 hour mode so that you won't, uh, you won't mess that up. And that's where every time you, you change one of those alarm settings, it prompts you to then go ahead and send that to the watch again hourly signal, part of that as well. So if you're setting a lot of alarms, you know, this could be a, a, a much simpler and easier way using the Bluetooth app to set alarms. This is where you can uh, reset the time on the countdown timer. You can't start or stop the countdown timer from the app, but at least you can set how uh, the, the duration of the countdown timer from this point. Here is a function that you can only use using the app. It's a reminder that you can send to the watch and something on the display will remind you of whatever you've told it to do. So like here, uh, that says I need to make a YouTube video. So I'm gonna go in and I can, I can change this. Okay, make a YouTube video tomorrow. Here's where you can tell it the date that you want that to happen. Or maybe you're gonna have it go, go you know, like the entire month of, of September, so, uh, or maybe I'll, eh, I'll take this all the way to October 31st. Okay, so, uh, and then I'll ch choose a day of the week, and I say, well, how about every Monday we go ahead and we make a YouTube video every Monday? So I'll send that out, and now that's in the watch. The reminder is there to tell you that there's a day when you're supposed to be reminded of something. So on those days, you may see REM show up in this box here, telling you there's a reminder, and if you press the button up here, let's see if I push that once, I'll disconnect from the app, but I, I push it again. And that's when the text pops up telling me what I was supposed to be reminded of this day. And this is reminding me it's the, it's the day that I'm supposed to make a YouTube video. So yeah, you can do up to 18 characters in a little message that'll show up there. And you can only set that using the app. Now the other G-Shock watches that I've shown in other videos have some sort, of, um, some sort of icon on the display to tell you if the battery is on a high, medium, or low charge state. And this watch doesn't show you on the screen, but it does show you here on the app, right up there in that corner. That shows you uh, the charge state of the battery, and it's, uh, it's pretty good. I could maybe top it off, put it outside in the sun for a little while, and top that off. But, so that, that's where you find out, uh, you know, how strong your battery charge is at the moment. If I go ahead and click up here on this little setting, this settings icon, this is showing me there's my watch and I can actually go in and I can change the name of the watch. I, I think, yeah, here I can, let me change it to, uh, it's the good time keeper. Okay. And there, no, so anyway, that's kind of fun. I can customize that. Here's you, you can get into some of the settings that you would otherwise have to push a whole, button, a whole bunch of buttons on the watch to set. So you can choose the 24 hour time uh, mode or you know, reverse the month and day display, change the, change the language for the day of the week. You go in here and this is where you can mute the little beep every time you press a button and change modes. Um, yeah, set, and, and here, here's a nice one. Um, when it is connected to the app, you can set it to stay connected for three, five, or 10 minutes. Uh, so, so what happens is if you don't touch any buttons on the, uh, on the watch or you're not interacting with the app, it'll time out after three, five, or 10 minutes and uh, then it'll automatically disconnect, which will save some, save some uh, you know, power on your app and on your watch especially. So it's got a timeout feature when, so, so you don't have to worry about turning it off uh, once you've got that Bluetooth connected, it'll just time out. Okay, time adjustment, and so this is where you tell it whether or not you want it to try to receive time automatically. Your backlight setting right here, and you can even turn on the automatic backlight so that when uh, you tilt the watch, it will activate that backlight automatically based on your motion. I'm gonna turn that on. Uh, okay, and yeah, power saving and summertime or daylight saving time uh, right there. And you can disconnect from this page as well if you want to, or like I said, I prefer to just let it time out after five minutes or whatever I've set it to. Here's a nice little courtesy feature on the app. If you press this uh, right here that says guide on the lower corner, 
This uh, is a, well, kind of a little instruction manual, a quick guide to show you what the different buttons do. So if you uh, tap on view the guide, right there in time mode, it tells you what all the buttons do. And sometimes a short press or a longer press on those buttons will do different functions. Uh, go into the world time mode and it shows you the other things the buttons do in that mode, alarm mode, stopwatch mode and the countdown timer mode. So again, um, if you wanna just double check those, if you can't remember exactly what all the buttons do with a long press or a short press or an even longer hold, uh, that's kinda nice to have that guide right there on the app. Now finally, I wanna show you how we save time and place information on the app. And when you get into this mode for the first time, you'll get this warning screen that tells you to make sure that you're complying with local laws and regulations when you use this device this way. But uh, so here's the screen where it can uh, show you all the places that you saved. I've switched to my phone for this instead of the iPad because I was had my phone with me when I was working the other day and driving around a lot. So I saved a bunch of locations as I was driving around. Uh, and if I tap here under all place, uh, it shows me all the places that I saved. And down here it shows you the uh, GPS coordinates and the time of day and the date when I was there. And then up here is a map. And if I tap on the map or no, tap on this, these two arrows on the map, I can go full screen on the map and it'll show me where I was when I saved that location. So, you know, it's got several, I can just, uh, oops, I can go back, scroll through these and see where I was when I saved all these locations when I was running around working the other day. Now the way this works as I've found, and maybe this is because of the way I've set up the app in my phone, um, it will not do this until I first disconnect from Bluetooth. So here's what I do. So I can press any button here and disconnect uh, the Bluetooth. So here we go, Dis uh, disconnected there. Now I, I, I'll, I'll make sure the app is running and then what I do is I just tap this button here on the lower right side of the watch. I don't hold it, just a quick tap. And then it takes a moment to make a connection and you can see that that's what's happening now. And uh, what this does is it updates the time on the watch. So that's one way to manually do that whenever you want to. And it also then will save the location data for when I just did that. So if I go here to the uh, last place saved, it will add the one that I just saved. And that's my home, but I'm not gonna show you where that is. You don't wanna know that, so, but it's, it's up there among my list of places where I have been. And it's worth noting that when the watch updates itself using Bluetooth, it's not updating itself to the phone's clock. It's actually using a server, some proprietary stuff that's uh, run by Casio. So if your phone's clock is not exactly right, uh, with any luck, Casio's clock will be more correct, and that's what it's using to set these watches. And let's also demonstrate the backlight on this, uh, just this button here on the upper right side. You'll see that the backlight kind of fades in and fades back out, and watch this little trick. See that, how it blinks red or orange there? That's what it does when there's an active reminder for this day. Otherwise, it's just gonna fade out uh, with the regular kind of blue color but it's kind of nice that that's uh, an, a second way to remind you that there's something in the reminder screen you should check. Well, I thought I was done, but just a couple more things to add. You know, I didn't tell you everything about this watch there is to know. Like for example, you can swap the world time city with the local time city on the watch. You don't have to do it with the app, but if you're in that mode, you could just uh, press the two top buttons simultaneously and that'll make that swap. Other G-Shock watches do that. I know people were excited that, uh, oh, Casio's making a smartwatch because they got the Bluetooth app and all that stuff. Well, this is not really, you know, if you're expecting something like an Apple watch, that's down the road a little ways. Casio hasn't announced anything like that that I'm aware of. Think of this primarily as a G-Shock watch with all the great features of G-Shock watches, plus uh, an app to help you access the settings, which for some people that might be easier to do that. Also, if you are in the Southern Hemisphere, or even parts of the Northern Hemisphere where multiband six doesn't work that well for you, having the option of uh, getting that time update through Bluetooth, that's, that's a great thing. So enjoy that. Uh, I love the app. Uh, something nice about the app also is that you can uh, put it in demo mode. So up here, you click on the settings and then uh, one, of the, one of the selections is demo mode. And then you can select which watch you want to demo. It could be this watch, 
or it could be any of the other watches supported by this app. So that's a nice way to kind of uh, do a virtual test drive of another watch that you might be interested in. I've already found one that I think is kind of interesting to me, so we'll see what happens about that. So, uh, you know, you can download the app even if you don't have any of those watches and do a little virtual test drive using the demo mode. All right, that's enough for now. <laughs> I will make another video and hope to see you again soon on another episode of The Good Timekeeping Show.